In this video, Jaggi Vasudev is saying that some immigration officer prompted him to read the Bible. I landed in the Beirut airport. The immigration officer asked me, what have you come here for? I said, uh, I teach yoga. He looked at me like this and said, just read the Bible. I said, yes sir, this is Lebanon, he can always send you back. That look and the way of addressing you, the kind of questions, everything was somewhere in a very depths of their psyche. This video has no content. It is just a setup by Jaggi Vasudev to flick and release Bhagwan Sri Shanmukha's talks on Christianity and Islam, which Bhagwan Sri Shanmukha has given all along to his Western students. We anticipate this and we are wanting to intercept Jaggi Vasudev's foul play. Therefore, we are publishing these lectures of Bhagwan Sri Shanmukha on Christianity and Islam, which he has been talking since very early times. We have all the evidences with the dates and all to prove everything. Bhagwan Shanmukha's students have also spoken on these topics in the radio stations of their respective countries. This is a clip from an interview of Bhagwan Sri Shanmukha by a Russian journalist in Goa in 2011. Please note that at this point in history in 2011, Bhagwan Shanmukha already had a teaching experience of over 30 years and it had already been 10 years since the publication of his books Divine Initiation and Third Eye of the Buddhist. In the Bible, you have this verse. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God and God was the Word. For the Tantrics, the Word was Shiva's Word because in the beginning was the Word. In the beginning means before sun, moon, stars, earth, there was the Word. And the word was with God. And who was that God? For Tantric is Shiva. <laughs> and the word was God. And the word was God because she was with him, with him together. And when there is an expression, then she unfolds. Bhagwan Sri Shanmukha Anantanatha, a traditionally educated, initiated Shakta Shaiva Guru, a living Kaula Tantra Guru, has an in-depth study of the cultures and traditions of Christianity, Islam, Chinese and Japanese philosophies and other doctrines of the world. No other guru speaks on these topics like Bhagwan Sri Shanmukha, as is clearly evident from his books, Divine Initiation and Third Eye of the Buddhist, written in 1990 and published in 2001. Bhagwan Sri Shanmukha knows Sanskrit, Tamil, Urdu, Hindi and few other non-Indian languages, including Chinese, Indonesian, Malaysian, etc. Altogether, he knows 14 languages. I quote this passage from page 2 of the book Divine Initiation, which proves Bhagwan Sri Shanmukha's depth of knowledge in the various doctrines, cultures and traditions of the world. The Veda is maintaining that its monistic science was perfectly understood and perfectly conveyed through a perfect language. In fact, the word for perfect is Sanskrit. Since there was a perfect language teaching a perfect science of monism, this was accepted by almost the whole ancient world. This synthesized perfected language is found as vestiges in almost every European language. Not only the language, but also the doctrines are lingering on in the form of European mythologies. This is not only the case with the Europeans, as the ancient philosophy of Iran or Persia originates from the Avasta, which is the Iranian recension of the Veda. Similarly, the Native Americans, Mexicans, Pacific Islanders, Aborigines, Maoris and others seemed to have embraced a specific version of this same science of monism. All this merely proves that the ancient world was a unified whole embracing a very sophisticated science of monism. This was beyond the kern of the people of the so-called modern world. Another reference point is on page number 13 from the chapter Indra. I quote, this concept of monism, where the divine is depicted struggling with the demonized serpent, is preserved by the entire universe of humankind. 
Indo-Europeans, Indians, Chinese, South Americans, Egyptians, etc. Also, Bhagwan Sri Shanmukha explains the concepts of Yin, Yang and Taoism throughout the book Divine Initiation. In his lectures to his students for over 40 years, Bhagwan Shanmukha has been sharing also deeper concepts in Sufism and also about the Sikh tradition, Guru Nanak, etc. Bhagwan Sri Shanmukha has been uniting the world through his teachings. The following video clips are from the satsangs with Bhagwan Shanmukha in Thailand and also from his lectures which he has been sharing for over 40 years. Soulmate. Yeah, soulmate is in the present life. No, you want to go back to the past? Uh... Um, it's because I was thinking that soulmate uh, like means from the previous life. That's what I'd like you that I had. See, the, the idea of soulmate in the uh, Western world is to, you know, at one time they were very, very rigid and they were very rigid and they believed in only one life, like in the Western world. So to free them from their limited uh, belief of only one life, they were talking like this, you know? These are the psychologists or the New Age uh, uh, world that made like, you know, there can be the possibility of many lives. I remember when I was uh, even like eight years old, you know, there was a big dispute about past life and present life and this life and that life. And there was like materials return against the idea of past life. And to move them, I don't know if you know, there was a Scottish man called Lopsang Rampa. I don't know if you've read his books. And he was talking about the past life and how he saw his past life and this. To free a segment of society uh, to look at life as a wholesome thing. You know, what the Christian text is talking, they are not talking you cannot become born again. They are all waiting for Christ to come anyway. You know, there is rebirth in Christianity because a reincarnation because he's going to be coming again you know so the idea of uh, life after life is there even in Christianity the idea that you segment life and see bits and pieces is not part of Christianity you, know, you understand what I mean don't segment it it's one whole life expression rather than just segments and segments and segments you, you understand what I'm saying so the whole idea of uh, being in your tantric uh, expression, the celebrating life, you know, you are connecting yourself with all the divine uh, beings. You know, the, the 50 alphabets and the 50 divinities and the 50 uh, external divinities, they are all part and parcel of yourself. They created you. You are the mirror image of all those divinities. That's how tantrics will say and that's how tantrics will teach you are mirroring them rather than you are assessing them do you understand what I'm saying you know like you're not going to sit down and do a puja and call Shiva and give him beetle nuts and send him up the whole work of the tantric is to no, like you see, okay, there are seven chakras. And then you, it's not just seven chakras. Then you have nadis. Then you have your uh, whole body system, your organ system, your this, your that. When you are having the knowledge of all these, then you say you are a tantric, let us say. Hmm? So you are having skill, knowledge to guide you all throughout life. That is the way of all the tantras, you know. When we are talking about uh, uh, Leonardo da Vinci, same thing. He's doing that there. You know? Um, it's only lost now. It's in the Greek world. Hippocrates, Galen, all those guys are talking about chakras. You see? So, the software that you are having has never been interfered. Only after your software has been interfered, you have right, bad, you know, I always joke and say, in right and uh, good and bad, 
there is a big problem of only I am right, you are wrong. Yes. Yes. If you go, you know, you see all the in Brazil, they are pulling off all the clothes, and the women are dancing. You know, that is part of the Kundalini culture, but it is gone uh, today to entertainment. <laughs> it's more they they miss the carnival for entertainment today because it is like the city council is promoting a big level of uh, dance. You know, and in the past it was the church, the Black Madonna Church. In France, I think there is 21 church for the Black Madonna. In Austria, there is, I think, one. In nearly every, in Portugal, there is some. You know, this is the Black Madonna is the esoteric Madonna. Uh, the, the normal Madonna is the Madonna, the mother of Christ. Christ is compassion and mother is knowledge. You, you understand what I'm saying? The mother depicts knowledge. So in the Indian world, it's Saraswati. You see, Saraswati is always white. So in the Christian world, it is Madonna. You know, then the esoteric Madonna is there. So you have, everywhere they have these presentations. More I speak for the, the tantric world, because that's where I was brought up. So I can speak more uh, easily, and also I know all the gods and goddesses and this and that, and the rituals and that and this, and also know Sanskrit. So I can more represent it uh, without problem. In England, we have very famous Black Madonna in Jehovah, and uh, every Christian wants to uh, pilgrim there. Oh, wow. But they don't understand actually the idea of Black Madonna. They, they say that Black Madonna is black by accident because it is some pain failure. No. It's so sad to think that the church is an accident. <laughs> it's I was on one uh, lecture about Black Madonna, and uh, I heard that in some churches they find the Black Madonna's wife because they think that. Oi! It's sad. <laughs> the Black Madonna is the esoteric Madonna. It's very important. You know, it's part and parcel of the other Madonna. You know, it's very sad that they're forgetting the whole cultures. You see, when I speak about Tantra, please remember one thing for me. When I'm speaking Tantra, I'm speaking for all the religion, not just the Indian religion. In Christianity, there is uh, Tantra. You know, they, they call it the alchemy, alchemist, the esoteric studies, blah, 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 blah. Uh, in Islam, there is Tantra. In uh, Judaism, there is Tantra. You know, the Kabbalah represents the Judaic uh, Tantra scheme. So, I'm speaking for all of them. In Chinese philosophy, there is Tantra. In everywhere, there is Tantra. Tantra is the higher study of uh, the spiritual sciences of the past. You know, it's not something like what um, people think is only belonging to India. No, I'm not talking like that. I'm talking about the whole human civilization and Tantra. So, when you are doing higher studies and you understand it and you live by it, you change first. When you change, you know what I'm trying to say? Not emotionally change, actually change. When you actually change, it's the most difficult uh, call in the world to actually change. Not easy to actually change. Now this book, if you look at from Shiva pra uh, practice and tradition, it is like the yin yang, you know, the Chinese yin yang. You know, what is the meaning of yang, what is the meaning of yin? So you have that in the, you, you can understand the Chinese philosophy also very well. And also, if you read this book and take Shiva and Shakti as Adam and Eve, you will understand the testament very well. Otherwise you will, you know, imagine all kind of things with the Adam and Eve. Why is Adam? Who is Adam? What is Eve? What was she doing? What was the snake doing? You know, why, you know, the apple disturbed them? You know, all this kind of stuff will be coming up in our head. So, you read this book, you'll understand, this is Adam, this is Eve, and the interplay. It's a wonderful book for studying so many aspects.
it explains the testament it explains the Quran it explains the Torah it explains Buddhism okay let's stop there do you understand may my heart hear the heart of the universe which is also your heart you know you, you you've, you've seen the painting of the heart in the Catholic uh, world the what do you call that uh, sacred heart how many of you seen this painting of the sacred heart in the yeah have you seen it's just a heart <laughs> in the museum you can see this and that that heart is the divine heart so here that divine heart is also your heart you know like oxygen you know oxygen is everywhere so you you live on oxygen but you uh, you cannot say it's my oxygen it's everyone's oxygen right it's not my oxygen your oxygen it doesn't work like that so the heart also means here the divine cosmic heart and at the same time it also means your heart students come from all over the world to not only study tantra yoga from bhagwan shri shamukha but also their respective religious ideologies such as christianity islam Buddhism and even Chinese and Japanese philosophies. All these are historically verifiable. The audio recordings and lecture notes of Bhagwan Shanmukha from pre-YouTube times proves this. These concepts of Islam and Christianity are also in Bhagwan Shanmukha's book Divine Agama and it is copyrighted. In the following video published on YouTube in 2013, you will see students of Bhagwan Shri Shanmukha talking on the esoteric topics of Islam, Christianity, Torah, etc., which they learned from him over many years. Please note that Bhagwan Sri Shanmukha has been sharing these teachings with his students for over 40 years, even before YouTube came into existence. Today, probably, I am one of the few Kaula teachers in India itself, because in the Kaula system, you see a blend of tantric concepts and asanas. Entire uh, yoga science is a science that extends meditation to the body. Tantra is a wholesome science and spirituality that lets you experience and apply it to your personal life. Tantra actually brings us back to our essential nature. And from this essential nature, we have a place where we don't culture neurosis. We don't get into neurosis. Do we get rid of conditionings and fears? With that, we are able to live efficiently, living life to its total potential. The tantrics consider the whole universe as one divine being that we are a part of. So it's a very specific and very precise science of who we really are. That's really a fundamental aspect of Tantra, to really learn to see yourself as a complete whole rather than bits and pieces. There are Tantric aspects in all world religions, in all world cultures, actually. In my case, it's discovering more about Islam and what the esoteric or Tantric aspects are in Islam. Tantra is also within the Western cultures, like for example, the Testament or the Torah contains a lot of Tantra, but we have to study this, we have to go deeper into it. So Tantra actually integrates us, and from an integrated selfhood, we see differently, we understand things differently, education becomes different. We talk a wide array of topics just so that we can, you know, remove layers of misinformation so that the, the science will actually sink in. Bhagavan has, a, has an interesting um, style of teaching. To me, it's almost like an oral tradition that goes way back thousands and thousands of years, and it forces you to learn it a different way. You know, we, we don't have a whole bunch of textbooks that we can read and study and, and memorize, and in the end, probably not mean a whole lot to us. They teach you that experience is the best teacher. Bhagavan Sri Shanmukha has been uniting the world through his teachings, while Jagi Vasudev has been politicizing dividing and exploiting. In this clip, you can see Jaggi is derogatorily calling the guest student as a Taliban. In this video, I will explain the whole context of the conversation between Sadhguru and the Muslim student. 
since a lot of people are asking about the whole context of the conversation of Sadhguru calling the Muslim student a Talibani, let's dig deep and reveal the whole context. I don't feel anything, so I, it's my attitude. Say you're like, stupid. Anything, anyone who's ever achieved anything in life had a certain element of stupidity. This is the context of the conversation where Sadhguru called Bilal a Talibani. The night you're meant to spend in the grave, you won't be spending it outside anyways. This guy is a proper Talibani. This is the video, which is controversial in terms of how it is out of context. This guy is a proper Talibani. <laughs> what is that? Huh? What is it? Talibani, Talibani. Oh, Taliban. Yeah, my name is Bilal bin Sakib. I don't know why. None of my other brothers and sisters have been. Bin means the Arabic uh, word. Uh, son of. Son of. Now here, he asks, what is the meaning of bin in Bilal bin Sakib? Which other students around them explain that it means son of. He does not know the meaning of common Arabic words. Therefore, his comment to Bilal about calling him a Taliban explains what he meant. Truly Islamophobic. When Jaggi does not know the meaning of even the very basic Arabic words like bin, there is no way in the world for Jaggi to know any teachings of Islam, Christianity, etc. In the following video, you can clearly see that Joe, as a Christian, feels marginalized by Jaggi Vasudev. So this crude sense of knowledge that you say is, 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 is the knowledge that's coming from the Supreme uh, Court of the country. No, no, please you, understand. You, you are, no, 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 please you are, listen to me. So you're still not addressing the point that who are, who are you and I sitting here to make prescriptions for women and say that this is harmful for you, hence don't do it, or this is not harmful and you shouldn't right. do it. You do not know the culture of this nation. You're talking simply activism. Yeah, yeah because, because I'm Catholic, right? Nation. Yeah, without because, because I'm Catholic, right? In this interview with Arnab Goswami on Republic TV, Jaggi is politicizing about the Brahmins. So when it comes to Brahmins, education, knowledge keeping, knowledge uh, keeping and perpetuating that, temple, spirituality was all entrusted to them. Well, they did become corrupt, they did become exploitative, they did become discriminatory, to a point almost it became like an apartheid that untouchability, other things were bred out of that. Jaggi Vasudev has no language skills and he never made a study of anything. I have always avoided learning Sanskrit language. Then you learn a little bit of Hindi then. <laughs> no, <laughs> you won't. <laughs> you won't? No. Punan Parang Tamil Pesri, Tamil Maria Kirude. Puri de do oraloke. Anna Tamil and Solomodia na Pesri, Tamil Maria don't Pesik. Yes, sir. You will think of Sakash Matadri, Hamjiki, Tamil, then you are. Okay. So, Canada Hashi Abagash to Hitela, Adru, Canada Lea, the Puzag Matad. I have never studied any spirituality. I have never made a study of anything. I am. Completely spiritually uneducated. I have neither read the Gita, nor the Vedas, nor the Upanishads, nor even the Yoga Sutra. I have never studied anything. Bhagwan Sri Shanmukha's works are copyrighted material. We have identified many videos of Jaggi Vasudev where he flicks, repackages Bhagwan Shanmukha's teachings, and attempts to predate it on YouTube and other digital platforms. Jaggi Vasudev has been fraudulently monetizing by flicking the teachings of Bhagwan Sri Shanmukha. This fraudulence and charlatanry of Jaggi Vasudev has been going on for too long already and we are releasing Bhagwan Shanmukha's lectures so the public can be informed and aware of the truth. Please subscribe to receive updates and please share the truth. Thank you for watching.